Hello everybody, this is Stranger Gamer back to conclude Group F. Ooh, three big matches here, including a big clash at the top between Blood Moon and Champions team. The winner of this match will win Group F. And then we have a massive game at the bottom between Brenton and Dinosaur Queen. And then we have Chainsaw taking on Merlin. So by the end of all this, we could have a completely different top four. Well, bottom four, I should say. I mean, these two are not going to move anywhere. Right. Let's get on with the first match, which sees the Champions team going up against Blood Moon. Well, as I said, it's a clash at the top between the Champions team and Blood Moon. Both combatants on identical points. And the winner of this match will top Group F. Okay, as for t at first for the Champions team, we have a Mapusaurus. Do not underestimate this beast. It won the Fire Tournament without dying once. Okay, as for Blood Moon in the blue corner, we have a tri- a chomp, I should say. Well, it is a triceratops, but it's chomp. A gabu. Well, it was kind of, um, got slaughtered in the first couple of matches, but since then, it's been quite impressive. Blood Moon had quite a shaky start of the tournament, as I said. Getting dominated by Melon in the first matchup. And then kind of taking a while to get going. But now that Blood Moon has got going, they've looked very impressive. Ooh, but the Mapusaurus gets off the opening crit. Big damage coming Chomp's way. As shown, and there's the technique boost that synergizes with Heat Eruption. Ooh, there's a tie. Ooh, Chomp striking back with a hit, and here comes Recovery, along with Kamikaze Tackle. Yeah, boosh! Sizable damage done by Chomp, and there's the Recovery, which works pretty well on Chomp, actually. Ooh, that's a tie. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this is why we have Technique Boost on Matlusaurus. So it can maximize heat eruption. There's the damage done. Mapusaurus has the slight lead over Chomp. It's another tie, but this time no heat eruption. Oh, but the Mapusaurus won't need it though, because he'll get that crit and give the Champions team a 1-0 lead. Alrighty then, up next for Blood Moon, we have a Baryonyx. This Baryonyx will be at a type advantage against that Mapusaurus, which could be key for Blood Moon to get back in the match. Nam. Ooh, that's not good though. A stun dash coming from Matusaurus. Are we going to see that same old pattern again? Where you fail to kill the first dino and you end up going 2 0 down. Okay, that's a tie. No heat eruption, no. And I think the tie helps Mapusaurus more. However, the Baryonyx gets off that hit, and it's a stomping hammer. Blood Moon even in the score. Alrighty then, up next for the champions team, we have the winner of the water washout tournament, the Spinosaurus. It won the tournament based on that water sword. It definitely did a lot of damage. And it has done some damage so far in this tournament too. Ooh, the Baryonyx though. Getting off a Futaba cannon. Big damage coming Spino's way. D 
decent hit there, and Blood Moon coming back strong. Ooh, a crit from the Barry. Blood Moon taking the lead. Taking the initiative and taking the momentum. Ooh, but a neck crusher from the Spino could change that. And the light recovery to come. Ooh, Aqua Vortex being triggered though. Oh my god, pitiful. Ooh, the Baryonyx won't need it though, because it does get off that crit, which finishes off the Spino. Okay, as for the champions team first and third and final dino, we have a Pachycephalosaurus. The winner of the Secret Showdown Tournament won the tournament quite well. And won the tournament based on those synergetic moves of Tie Attack and Tie Breaker. Along with his Tie Type Battle Type. Oop, that's a tie. Oh, here comes the ties. Suiting the Pachycephalosaurus more. However, that will not suit Pachycephalosaurus. A Futaba Cannon coming from Blood Moon. Blood Moon definitely on top now. But don't count the Champions team out yet. Wow, I did loads of damage. Oh, here comes the hit from Pachycephalosaurus. Even in the score. But Blood Moon is still in the lead. And as for Blood Moon's third dino, it's interestingly enough a Pachycephalosaurus. But unlike the Champions Team 1, it does not have any secret moves, which makes it actually interesting. It's a bit of a gamble, but so far it seems to be a gamble that has paid off. Ooh, that's a tie, but again, that will suit the Champions Team Pachycephalosaurus more. And there's the secret move. Ooh, there's a crit from the Pachycephalosaurus. The Champions Team one, that is. Wait, wait, what happened to Tiebreaker? It did activate, didn't it? Well, we're going to find out now, aren't we? Ooh, maybe not. The Pachycephalosaurus looking strong. And both of our combatants have guaranteed themselves points, but it all comes down to this. Ooh. Here comes the light recovery, and the defense boost, and the tie bomb. Is this lethal? Indeed it is. Blood Moon snatching the match from the champion's team. And... Oof. <laughs> That's more like it. Blood Moon snatching the match there. But the Champions team will get a losing bonus point. So it's not all doom and gloom. But it doesn't really matter in the end. Because Blood Moon will top group F. And the Champions team will probably finish second or third. Depending on how the other matches go. Right. Time to update the table. And we'll move on to our next matchup. Alrighty then. Up first for Brenton we have an Abelosaurus. And the theme of this tournament seems to be that people with Omega Armor Eocarcaria in the team seem to struggle. But Brenton can secure their place in the last 32 with a win in this match. Or a draw, actually. Hell, even a losing bonus point, I think. Actually, no, that won't be enough because they'll be on level points. But Dinosaur Queen will be above Brenton. Alrighty then. Oh, as for Dinosaur Queen's second, first dino, we have a Tajongosaurus. And we definitely saw what this beast did to the melon in the, in the previous matchup. And Dinosaur Queen's gonna need it to do need it to do well here. Because if this Abelosaurus gives Brenton a lead, it will be tough for Dinosaur Queen to claw their way back. Because her second dino will be at a tight disadvantage against this Abelosaurus. Of course, on the flip side, Dinosaur Queen's second dino, the Rugops, will be at a tight advan advantage against Brenton's second dinosaur. So a lot of key matchups here, but let's see how it plays out. Ooh, here comes the, what the bloody hell is this move? Crimson Flame. Okay, <laughs> no mistakes, no mistakes, no mistakes. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, I got it. 
big damage coming to Jongasaurus's way, and Brenton off to a good start. Not good for Dinosaur Queen though, because if the Rugops comes in in a situation like this, it'll be a long way back. Ooh, that's a tie. Huge relief for the for Dinosaur Queen there. Oh, Abelosaurus went for the KO, but the Rock Roller's gonna stop it. And instead, I think it is actually going to be lethal for Abelosaurus. Blip. Yeah, and it's good night, Avalosaurus. And here's the Velociraptors with the victory jump. Alrighty then, as for Brenton's second dino, we have a Super Mutaburosaurus. Wouldn't count Brenton out yet though, because this thing will be at a type advantage against that Tajongosaurus, which could be key to taking it, out, taking it out as quick as possible. Because if this the Tajongosaurus gets off too much damage, when Rugops comes in, all it will probably take from Rugops then is one hit. Ooh, that's a tie. I think that will probably, again, suit Dinosaur Queen more. Because she has the lead. Ooh, big two platoon crash from the Mataburra though. Brenton even in the score and it's been quite a back and forth match so far. Neither of our combatants seems to have grabbed the initiative. But here's where the tight matchup could be key because, as for Queen's second dino, we have a Rugops. And watch out for that Hurricane Beak as it will pack a punch. And yeah, that seems to be the theme for Dinosaur Queen's first two dinosaurs. She's picked dinosaurs that have very high crit damage and can synergize with like extra like extra damage moves like Giga Hammer, Jet Shuriken, and then big hitting moves like Hurricane Beat, Rock Roller. And then support moves. And I thought it would work, but it, it's been... It didn't quite happen. But Dinosaur Queen did get that win last time out. Which seems to give her a little bit of a lift. Ooh. Two platoon crush, though. I th the type advantage will save Rugop from taking too much damage. But damage will be dealt. Okay, I need to double check. Awaken mode on three. Yeah, look at that. They're not too much damage dealt. And the hurricane beat has been triggered. Oh, a big hit from Queen. A hurricane beat is going to be a one-shot KO for Mutterborosaurus. And, 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 and Dinosaur Queen here is going to get a 2-1 lead. Yeah, look at that. Pretty much an insta kill. But again, don't count Brenton out yet because this Omega Eocarcaria does have the type advantage over that Rugops. So, so as long as it av avoids taking too much damage, Brenton is still in this. However, what I will say is that the Rugops are I think can survive one hit. Ooh, hit from the Rugops though. Not too much damage will be dealt though, as you can see there. So I don't think Eokarkiri will be too phased by that. That's a tie. And I think the tie did more damage. Ooh, the Eokarkiri getting off that Magma Blaster. And I think this will be curtains for Rugops. So again, it's a very even match here, as Dinosaur Queen's third dino, the Kralophosaurus, comes in. Skip, because they all have secret moves. Ooh, I, I think Brendan has a slight edge here, but... You know, the way this match has been going, you never know. Ooh, it's a hit from the Eocarcaria. A sizable amount of damage done there. Ooh, you 
becomes the Lilian Sora for the Lilian Cure. Brent and turning the screw right when he needs to the most. Ooh, ooh, this might be lethal. Ooh. <laughs> ooh, the crow gets the hit. Dinosaur Queen not beaten yet. Ooh. Oh, it all comes down to this. Oh, I think Dinosaur Queen has snatched it. Oh, Dinosaur Queen. From the jaws of elimination has snatched the mat from Brenton and has booked her place in the last 32. <laughs> Oh, what a match that was. Just when you thought Brenton was going to win, Dinosaur Queen storms back to snatch it. Oh, a massive game that. Right, we'll update the table and we'll move on to our final match of this session. Well, it's all or nothing here in this matchup as we see Chainsaw taking on Melon. A win for Chainsaw will set them up nicely for the knockout round defeat. Well, it don't really matter if they lose because they're already through. Anyway, up first for Chainsaw, we have a Sorrow Pelter. As for Melon in the blue corner, though, we have a Sorrow Faganax. And, well, there is a there is actually a glimmer of hope for Melon in this matchup. If Melon can somehow win 3-0, they will have enough points to go through. Anything else, though, and Melon will be going home. So, there is a slight glimmer of hope for Melon. But as soon as this Sorrow Faganax dies, that hope is extinguished. Ooh, an ACT rocket going into orbit here. That means that damage will be coming Sorrow Faganax's way sooner or later. Oh, like now. Okay, that was rock. So Sorrow Pelter got rock. Ooh, another rocket coming into space. Sorrow Pelter off to a good start. And Melon off to a bad one. Oh, oh, oh dear. Um, here comes a mole attack. Melon off to a poor start here. But Chainsaw firing on all cylinders so far. And here comes Earth Barrier. And the rocket will finish off Sorrow Faganax. Which means Melon's slim hopes of qualifying from the group stage have all but ended. Yep, it's game over for Melon. No miraculous 3-0 win today. And well, so far it looks like Chainsaw's going to win 3-0. Alright, as for Melon's second dino, we have a Desantorurus. This beast has been pretty decent, I'd say. It's been okay. But Chainsaw dominant so far. Um, although that rocket was kind of wasted because it's not going to come back down now. Oh, that's a tie. Remember, the Zero Pelter still has the Earth Barrier protecting it, so even wet, even if the, the buddy um, Melon gets a hit, it won't do that much damage. However, these rockets from Chainsaw will do damage. Will it come down now? Nope. But yeah, let buddy Melon get a hit. Like, this is completely unfair. Ooh, Crystal Crusher being triggered, though. But Melon probably won't get it off. So, doesn't really matter, I suppose. Oh, they are going to get it off. A Crystal Crusher here, which I think will ignore Earth Barrier as well. So, standard damage will be dealt, as you can see. And there's the defense being lowered. Oh, and an earth barrier as well. 
finally Melon gets a hit in this match. But here comes the ACT rocket and oh. <laughs> Desandorus is dead. And Chainsaw has a 2-0 lead. Okay, as for Melon's third and final dino, we have a Gojirasaurus. Melon already out of the tournament now, but can they finish on a high? Probably not, but can they can they finish with a bang, I should say. It's a four. Ooh, Gojirasaurus getting off a hit. And that's Melon's first official hit of this match. And remember, the Soropelter's defense is weaker thanks to Crystal Crusher. But the Earth Barrier is still in effect, so this damage won't be that much. Oh, it is that much. Wait, what happened to Earth Barrier? Oh, does it wear off after so many turns? Maybe it does. I don't know. So many mysteries in this game that we still know nothing about. What I do know, though, is that the Soropelter is finally dead. But Chainsaw's still in a commanding position here, as his second dino, the Albertus Eratops, comes in. Actually, a 3-0 win. Might have put Chainsaw top? No, no. Would have put him second. Like, second is the best they can get. Oop, that's a tie. But Gojirasaurus, though, is charge type, so it will do a decent amount of damage in ties. As will this crit do some damage. Melon coming back strong. And here comes another Jet Shuriken. Well, 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 all of a sudden. All of a sudden, Melon fighting back. But again, where was this when Soro Faganax was in the arena? Oh, there's Counter Blitz. Oh, but the Counter Blitz is not going to activate because another Jet Shuriken is going to finish off Alberta Ceratops. Melon definitely not going out the tournament with a, without a fight. Can Melon get the win here? It'll be a very impressive win. It won't mean anything because it'll still, still be knocked out, but can they finish their tournament on a high? And if they do win this match, it'll be a very good win. But there's still a long way to go yet. This Spino Tector, this Spiny Dino Tector is a tough beast to tussle with. But this Gojirasaurus keeps hammering away. Although, look at that damage. Not too much damage dealt. But another Jet Shuriken will shave away a bit of our Spiny's health. And all of a sudden, Melon in the lead out of nowhere. Ooh, but the Spiny does get that hit. Not too much damage dealt, though. Ooh, Chainsaw, though, battling back strong. And I think this Aqua Javelin is going to be lethal for Gojirasaurus. So, despite a valiant fight back by Melon... Chainsaw ultimately claiming the victory, but it was not as comfortable as it looked like it was going to be. And yet, sadly, that will be the end of Melon in this tournament. So, we'll update the table and we'll end the session. Alright, that is how Group F will finish, ladies and gentlemen. We have Blood Moon topping Group F with 4 wins, 1 defeat, 14 points, 2 bonus points. And then we have the Champions team and Chainsaw level on points with the exact win-loss bonus point and points record. But by virtue of the fact that Champions team defeated Chainsaw, the Champions team will indeed finish second and Chainsaw will finish third. Then again, same situation down here because Dinosaur Queen won th this matchup. Dinosaur Queen will finish fourth and go through and Brenton will be eliminated. But, wow, look how tight that is. Like, nothing to separate these two. But by virtue of the fact that Dinosaur Queen won their matchup, she goes through and Brenton goes home. Hang on, I shall put the O-U-T down. And then we have poor little Melon in sex. Who, who, did, who did go out with a bang, I will say. Who did go out with a fight. Showed a little bit of defiance in the end. But ultimately, 
too much to handle. And four losses, is not five. And, and they did get one win in the tournament. So, you know, there is a bit of a... There is some highlights there. At least there's something to smile about. But ultimately, Group, def, group F was definitely a tough group, though, for Mellon. All right, let's have a look at the possible matchups in the last 32 now. So we could see Blood Moon taking on either Aladar, Darius, Torvasaurus, Ultimate Dino King, or Slifer Sky Dragon. The Champions team going up against Dark Ash Star, Nopey, Star Pumpkin, Ibuki, or Dino Nerd. Ooh, that'll be a tough game for any of those guys, the Champions team. They're pretty strong. And then we have Chainsaw T Possibly taking on Lanzu, DBW's original gangsters, Pilk, Laus Tor. Again, I think we know these two are the ones to avoid. And then we could see Dinosaur Queen taking on Nano Hunter, Chompstan, Mr. Backpack, Shadow Force, and the Champions. And I think we all know who to avoid in that category. Definitely want to avoid the hosts. But yeah, that's going to end this session. So stay tuned for next time where we will conclude Group G. And until then, this is Stranger Gamer signing out.